Well, hello, welcome back to uh, part four of uh, Introduction to the Art of Revelation, which I've just released online and is available for purchase on WaltonAcademy.com or Amazon.com. And this week what we're going to talk about is something called time texts. It's important when we see something in scripture that has a timing to it that we pay attention to this. Uh, whenever there's a prophecy, if the prophet is accurate and they are a true prophet of the Lord and they get it right, the timing should come to pass according to what the prophet says. Otherwise, the prophet should be called into question. This is important because when we get to the book of Revelation, as I have here on the board, we have seven time texts. These are time texts that tell us when the book of Revelation was supposed to come to pass. Now, let's say that in the first video I've already proven that the, the book of Revelation was written during the reign of Nero. But if the book of Revelation was written then, and the author had said, yea, yea though the Lord has given me this prophecy, it's going to be another 2,000 years before it takes place, we would know, okay, good for you, John, you did a great job, let's sit back, relax, get some people saved, have some nice church, and wait for the rapture. But the book of Revelation is a challenge to us because these seven texts actually say that it was going to happen soon. And then we have to maybe twist what the word soon means to try to make it fit for us because we don't understand what it actually is about. See, it says in Revelation 3.11, I am coming quickly. It says in Revelation 11 verse 14, the third woe is coming quickly. It says in Revelation 22, verse 6, the things which must shortly take place. Revelation 22, verse 7, behold, I am coming quickly. Revelation 22, verse 10, uh, for the time is near. Now that's proximity as well as time. And then we have Revelation 22, verse 12, behold, I am coming quickly. And then Revelation, lastly, 22, verse 20, yes, I am coming quickly. Now, fortunately, there's some variety in these seven verses, because if he only uses the word quickly, which is what my NIV translates it as, if you only use the word quickly, then it's easy to twist it to try to make it fit for you by saying, well, yes, Jesus is going to come quickly, meaning when he comes two millennia later, he'll come fast. He'll wait a really long time and then he'll come in like a rocket. No, it, it's not talking about the speed at which he comes. It's talking about timing. That's why it says it will shortly take place. That's why it says the time is near. It doesn't only use the word quickly in reference to thinking like uh, it, he's going to come in here like really, really fast. When he comes, he comes, but it also, this timing text is saying, it's going to happen soon. Some of yours are translated soon, which is a much better translation, because when John writes it in uh, the 60s AD, he writes the book of Revelation about what's going to happen within 10 years, it was soon. It was soon for him. The destruction of Jerusalem happened soon after he prophesied it. Now, it's not about the second coming and Jesus coming back physically and his physical return, which will happen as a fulfillment of Acts chapter 1, where he said, I'll come back the same way you see me leave. That hasn't happened. But the book of Revelation is, as we said in the last video, it's a parallel of the destruction of Jerusalem that was prophesied by Matthew, Luke, and Mark in the Olivet Discourse. That took place soon or quickly after it was prophesied. We have to pay attention to timing. One last quote, this is from the scholar, uh, the, the scholar Gordon Fee. He wrote, a text cannot mean what it never could have meant to its author or his or her readers. Meaning, soon never meant 2,000 years to them. Quickly never meant 2,000 years later. If it didn't mean it to them, it couldn't mean it to us. We can't twist it to make it fit for us. It's violating scripture to do that. And it's not, it's just not the right way to make the Bible fit your paradigm. It has to fit 
naturally with what the scripture actually means and what it would have meant to the author writing it down. As Gordon Fee has, has so brilliantly put it, a text cannot mean what it never could have meant to its author or his or her readers. Thank you very much for joining me. We'll see you next week.